A boss mom doesn't allow society to tell her that her goals no longer matter. She handles her business both inside and outside of the home. Welcome to the Boss Mom Movement Podcast with me, your host, Ashley White, where you'll hear me speak with millennial moms who have not allowed the title mom to stop them from achieving their goals. During this podcast series, we'll discuss how we balance it all and other mom-related topics. It's a space for all my bossy mamas, whether you're a entrepreneur, mama in corporate, or both. Being a boss mom isn't easy, but it's our lifestyle. So with that being said, all right, boss moms, let the movement begin. Hey, Boss Moms, welcome back for another episode of the Boss Mom Movement Podcast. You are here for episode six, and we are in season five. And today I have a special guest with me, fellow podcast mom um, and nine to five corporate mom. So Mm -hmm. Alyssa Smith is here to join me in the topic of what is consistency as a working mom. So welcome to the show, Alyssa. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to finally be a part of your podcast. I know, right? And for those of you who don't know, I was a part of Alyssa's um, podcast, which you should definitely go back and check it out. I'm going to list it in the show notes, the link, so you guys can easily access it. But we had a great time. So I'm super excited to be here with you tonight for the Boss Mom Show. I'm excited too. So let me give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, So like Ashley said, my name is Alyssa. I work a nine to five job. I actually work from home right now, thank goodness, um, for a Mm -hmm. virtual substance abuse treatment program, um, which is obviously super time consuming. And about two years ago, I started my podcast journey. I'm actually on my second podcast. Um, The first one didn't exactly go the way that I thought that it would go. This one's kind of more of about me and balancing and being a mom and things like that. And um, that's how Ashley and I connected. And it's difficult. I mean, we were talking right before we started recording and we both have full-time jobs. We're trying to keep up with content. We're trying to record. It Mm -hmm. gets so difficult. It gets so difficult. And I feel like we've gone over that a bit. (laughs) Exactly. I was going to say, I actually came up with this topic based on our conversation on your show, just about how much we have to juggle. And it gets hard. Like we are doing podcasts on the side, probably doing other things, too. I know for me, I have like, I feel like three other jobs outside. Yes. (laughs) And being a mom. So which is a job in itself. So it's just like, how do we remain consistent in the things that we want to do outside of our nine to fives? Is it even possible? Crickets. <laughs> uh, it's so, it's so hard. I mean, it really is possible, but you just have to really want it for yourself. I feel like something mm-hmm. that I've noticed, and I'm sure you can um, you can agree. When you're a mom, you come last. Everyone else gets taken care of before you, including you know your dreams. So if you're if you're dreaming about something, you're gonna come last. You're gonna make sure your kids are taken care of. And then sometimes when we get finished with all the things that we have to do, we're tired. We don't exactly. we don't want to put the work into something extra. Exactly. And it's hard to stay motivated with it. Like today, even like I don't mm-hmm. even want to say I was dreading it, but it was just like, oh my gosh, I had a long day at work. Mm -hmm. Now I have to go and do something else. Like in addition to recording tonight, I had something to do with my travel business. So it's just like, how do you, and maybe I'll let you go first and sharing, like, how do you even stay motivated to continue to even try to be consistent with the other things that you're doing outside of work? I, the only thing that I can say is that I really see this becoming part of my future. I really see this turning Mm -hmm. into a career for me, um, whether it's just the podcast or just like digital creation and things like that in general. Um, Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's my biggest goal. I know that if I stay consistent and I am constantly out there and people are recognizing me or hearing my podcast name or even seeing me on social media, they know like, oh, hey, you know, I, I remember her. That's not going to happen if you're here and then you're not and then you're there and then you're not and then you are consistent with episodes and then you're not like that's just kind of how you build the word of mouth. If someone says, oh, this store is so great, you got to go visit this store. And then every time someone goes to the store, it's closed. You're not going to go back there. 
if that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. No, that's actually perfect. And I 100% agree with you. Like, you definitely have to stay consistent in it, especially if you want to see it flourish in the future, you know, depending on what your goals are. And mm-hmm. I agree with that because I, too, feel like this is going to be what is going to take me out of, you know, my nine to five life and become that full time entrepreneur that I soon hope one day will happen. And sure. it's just like like you said. If people, if we want to, you know, gain the momentum in our show or, you know, attract more listeners, you do have to remain consistent because people listen to podcasts. And I know even for me, like if it doesn't come on frequently, like I end up losing interest in it. So, you know, that's just something that I just keep in the back of my mind as I continue to do seasons and, you know, even just getting up to record. It's like, okay, girl, you might not feel like doing it tonight, but you know, you got to produce content. It has to be Mm -hmm. something there for next week, you know, which is something I also wanted to go into just about like how you remain consistent, because I feel like for me, it's creating a routine, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you stay consistent? Do you have routines that you follow or schedule that you live by? So I'm going to be honest with you. I am such a I need to have a schedule and routine type of person. Do I actually execute that? No, like almost none of the time. And I feel like that's why I'm always so stressed out and all over the place. Um, Mm -hmm. But the times that I do actually sit down and I think about, okay, I'm going to record this day and then I'm going to post about this on this day, like certain things that I know that I want to do, my Mm -hmm. whole entire life is just that much smoother because it's less to think about. So that's even, that's hard in itself too, is like, you know, I have to come up with a whole plan of what I'm going to do for this month or this week or whatever. And, you know, it gets discouraging, but yeah, definitely having a plan or just content written up before I do something. So I just have so much content, you know, if that makes sense Mm -hmm. too, Mm -hmm. just so I'm not scrambling for ideas. And then, you know, I just go from there. Yeah. Have you ever considered bringing in help, like maybe a content writer because I know I've thought about it and even like social media manager have you ever thought of like bringing in additional people to help you I've actually been thinking about that a lot lately um I feel like I struggle with keeping up on certain things I've been kind of quiet on the podcast Instagram for like a couple weeks because I had some other things going on that I had to use my regular Instagram for and it's just so much to do Um, and because it's so much work on Instagram, like you almost, you don't go on Instagram just to like stuff or see people's stuff anymore. It's just work, work, work. Mm So yeah, I kind of have been thinking about that lately because I feel like I need some separation between personal and business. Yeah, for sure. sure. I know when I had a social media manager, I think I mentioned this on your show too. Mm -hmm. Like life was definitely smoother. It was just like, oh my gosh, I, I literally don't even have to touch social media unless I want to. Mm -hmm. Because I know the content is going to post. And I know a lot of people use like apps like Preview, I think is one that will self post for you. You just have to pay for it, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. I've I've tried it. Well, not the paid version. I actually downloaded it not knowing that you had to pay for it. And so I'm like, wait, it doesn't just post. Like it'll it'll let you create it so you can see what it would look like if you want to post whatever that content is. But it didn't automatically post. And I was like, dang, something else I got to pay for. Which I feel like, you know, is another thing to help, you know, be consistent. Because one thing that I have come to realize is that like routines and systems like really help me stay consistent. So like with my other business, my travel business, I have a uh, CRM that just takes care of like I put in stuff. And it follows like the calendar and I don't have to worry about going in manually doing things like every time Mm. I need to send something like how. So what do you feel? And I feel like that's one of my biggest uh, flaws, I guess I would say, in being consistent in in anything that I do is just the time management of it. So what do you think is like your biggest? I don't want to say weakness. And yeah, I'll say what do you think is your biggest weakness? I have a couple (laughs) to consistency (laughs) it's definitely time management I mean even right now it's Wednesday afternoon I haven't recorded my podcast for this week because I had an issue with you know having a guest with me I didn't plan on doing a solo podcast but you know here we are two days before my episode is supposed to drop and nothing's done yet um it's it's kind of that and it's a little bit of just 
I just, I'm such a bad procrastinator. That's, mm. that's probably my biggest downfall in life is that I'm just a procrastinator because I'm always like, yeah, I could just do this later. No problem. And then it's last minute and it could be better. I feel like even for my episode last week on my podcast, I wasn't like super thrilled with the episode, but I was just so in my mind. I've gone 31 episodes with no breaks. I want, I don't want to take a week off unless I'm playing ahead of it. No, no breaks. But no, but see, there was a point in time when I did two back to back weeks of interviews. So I had episodes Mm -hmm. to go for like two months, but instead of getting myself ahead and caught up, I was like, I'm just going to take a break for this two months while I'm not recording. So it was a little bit of a break. It was. Okay. Because I'm like, there is no way. Like, there's no way. And that's why I ended up doing seasons so that I could implement breaks and it makes sense. Like, Mm -hmm. and you're not just like, oh, where is she? You know, it's like, okay, yeah. Because there's just, I don't know how people do it. I also look at other podcasters and I'm like, you're on episode 300? Yeah, how? How did you get there? Like, (laughs) Like, that's why I've been, you know, I think about like ghostwriters for music and stuff. I'm like, I need a a ghostwriter for content because I literally am sitting here like, okay, this is season five. I don't even know what episode, like if I wasn't doing a season, what it would be. But I feel like it's somewhere in the 50s. And I'm just, I'm already like stuck on the next season. Because like this season is already done with topics because I already mm-hmm. have the guests. But now I'm just like, I'm already mentally thinking about season six and I'm just like what do am you I gonna focus talk about? <laughs> do you focus on one specific thing during each season like do you try to highlight something mm-hmm. in that season or is it just no and I started thinking about that like just as I continue to progress because I definitely want to keep going with the podcast because mm-hmm. I get motivated when I see people on episode two and three hundred I'm like okay clearly yeah, people sure. have something to say um but I don't focus on any specific thing and I think I don't do it like that well I know I don't do it like that because I never know who I'm gonna have on the show Mm -hmm. like who's going to agree and I do 10 episodes a season so I'm like I like to focus on really the mom and what they bring to the table and make that like the topic so it's not Mm -hmm. really like I mean I've thought about it though is that something that you do yeah, I mean, do, I, or do you do seasons? Well, I don't do seasons. No, I kind of okay. everyone told me in the beginning to do seasons, but I kind of just been putting episodes out just numbered one through whatever I'm on right now 31. Um, But like I had a couple I had a couple things that I had planned to speak about spread over different Mm -hmm. episodes and like times that I wanted to talk about them. But I feel like it makes it easier because I try to tell real life current stuff about my life that's Mm -hmm. like going on right now. So I kind of make not only the point of my podcast, but I include like a little bit of me in it and I'll spill my drama or my tea or whatever, like just so people can kind of get to know me on another level more than just like this preachy podcast mom. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't even like, because I bring in other moms and I like to highlight their business, their brand or their career. And then it kind of like just brings out other things like just talking about their personal journeys. And then I'm able to share like mine that's relatable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm like, nah, instead of having like a season where it's like, okay, we're focused on, I don't know, purpose or, you know, what have you, like it kind of just comes out and in conversation, but you know, I, I do see people doing that. And so I guess that helps them, you know, with their consistency when it comes to doing a show and just saying, okay, I know I'm going to focus on this subject, but it works for them. You know, that's cool. It's just, I don't, but I do like to have a calendar. I actually started, um, cause I was kind of like all over the place when it came to recording, which was not good for like my mental because I'm just like kind of just going with the flow. So I started, Mm -hmm. um, only recording on certain days. Because, okay. you know, it it just helps me when it when you talk about consistency. So I'm like, OK, I know I'm going to record on Tuesdays. And now I just opened up Wednesdays as just like an alternative date. But that was like my thing. And then also helping to make sure I have child care. <laughs> hmm. That's the biggest so thing. I feel that. like that that is mm-hmm. the biggest thing for me, because, you know, I think even when we did our episode together, my son busted in the room because 
he was, you know, he wanted to know what mom was doing. And that's hard too, yeah. because sometimes I'll sit down to record and I'll get overwhelmed. Like, you know, I just told my kids to get out seven different times. Now I'm over it. Now I have nothing to say. Now I'm not motivated. I have nothing to talk about anymore. I'm aggravated. I'm done. I'm going to bed. Yeah. And I think, and I, that's hard too. I liked that. Yeah, it is. And it's so crazy because I feel like that was happening with me, like, I don't, it doesn't bother me, you know, when kids, cause we're moms. And mm -hmm. if you listen, I mean, most of the people that listen are moms, so they understand, you know, but then it's kind of like, I get into that mode. Like you said, it's like, I don't want to have to keep stopping or like, cause my kids, he's, he's one. So mm -hmm. he's, it's like, if he's around, he wants all of my attention and it's not too much that he can't, that he can do without any supervision so yeah it's like hard to say okay go sit down play with your toy because his attention span is like two seconds so it's like for me I have to have someone to watch him so that I can make sure that I I get it and then my mom she's like but you're a mom you need to be authentic I'm like mom I am being authentic I'm being authentically me but like I don't I don't want to be authentically having him <laughs> Climb up yes. on my lap. <laughs> you can definitely be authentic by saying, you know, it's annoying when I'm trying to work and my kid climbs on my lap. But, you know, like it's so funny because I was always like the friend cousin with kids and then my cousin started having kids. So, like, now mm -hmm. when I call my cousins and she's yelling at, she has a two year old and an eight month old, a uh, six month mm -hmm. old. So she'll be like, you know, yelling at her daughter in the background. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I do, I gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah. Because, you know, though it's like it's being like being on the phone with someone who's a mom. Like, I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to hear mm -hmm. that on your podcast. I got enough of that going on. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah, no. But I feel like that's sometimes, too, what kind of like gets in gets me into inconsistent modes because, OK, I know I have to go and do this with the baby and like mm -hmm. just even trying to find times for certain things, whether it's recording, whether it's. I'm going to do something with my hair store employees or, you know, whatever the case is. It's just like trying to find that balance in order for mm -hmm. me to even find the time to be consistent. is like one of my biggest challenges, I guess I would say. Hey, Boss Moms. Sorry to interrupt. I know you're enjoying this episode, but I had to come share with you the Boss Mom Mastermind Group. I am currently accepting signups through the month of August for this mentorship group where we're able to share our goals, motivate each other with resources, strategies to help us get to the next level within our businesses and our careers. This group will meet on a biweekly basis virtually, and then we'll meet in person on a quarterly basis. You can sign up at thebossmommovement.com. I hope to see you there. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right. Now let's get back to this episode. Yeah. You know, it, I think it's just, I would say even the most annoying times of, and I hate to say being, being a mom is annoying, but like even just the annoying times of trying to balance it all is partially what keeps me motivated to even keep going. Yeah. I can see that. I can definitely see you know? that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Cause I'm like, I want to be successful it, for you. Yeah, no, same. I feel my kids are my biggest drive. Like I think about this all the time. And I mean, my situation is a little bit different. I was a teen mom. So a lot of the times I feel guilty. Like, you know, I had these kids way before I was ready. I want to be able to give them the best mm -hmm. life and show them that it wasn't in vain. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that absolutely. I had you guys young, but I made it I made it work and I made it happen for you. So that's like my biggest motivation. I just want to be able to give them everything that they want. Yeah. Yeah, I literally went to um, a conference festival um, mm -hmm. this weekend and I did an interview with um, another like show. They were there as a vendor and the girl who was interviewing me, she's a mom. And right after we were done, she said, the boss mom, I follow you. And I'm like, really? Like literally, wow. small world, like, how did I know? And I was not going to do the interview. Like we were literally me and my friends were walking by. And I was like, I wonder what they're doing. And because she was interviewing somebody as I was walking by. So I was just like, I wonder what's going on. So I like stopped and I asked the guy who was waiting. He was getting ready to do it. He's like, yeah, they're interviewing entrepreneurs. Are you an entrepreneur? And I'm like, yeah, literally getting ready to like say no, because I'm like, I don't think mm -hmm. I want to do it. And like, how do I have a podcast? And I'm afraid to be interviewed. But I was just like, 
okay. He said, no, you should do it. Once I told him, I'm like, yeah, I am. He's like, no, you got to do it. Then you got to stay because he was being talked into doing it himself by somebody Mm -hmm. that he was with. So he was just like, yeah, I'm going to do it. You're going to do it. And I was just like, okay. But like, I literally tense up when it comes to talking about my businesses, which is crazy because how do I sit here and have a show and talk to people? But I can't even talk Mm -hmm. about my own stuff. That's so funny you say that because I thought I was the only one. Like, even how you said before that you were, like, low-key, like, dreading, like, doing this. I have felt like that so many times. And then the interview will turn out great. And then afterwards, I'm like, I'm really glad that I did that, even though I didn't Mm -hmm. want to. But, like, it's not just podcasting. It's just, like, everything in general. Everything is so hard because there's always so much going on. There's always so much It is. It is. And like even getting up for work, like I my manager is like because I work from home, too. So my manager is not like crazy. She's not one of those crazy managers. It's like you need to be online at eight. And, you know, like, thank mm-hmm. thank goodness. And I, and I preach that to people like to, to other moms, like find a job that works for you, like and it's not going to be down your neck. But I personally am like telling myself, OK, you need to be online at a decent time, which for me is nine, 9 a.m. I'm like, that's Mm -hmm. not too early. It's not too late. And I struggle. I literally struggle. Like for the last few months anyways, I have been just Mm -hmm. getting out of bed and like getting motivated. It's like, I love what I do, but it's just like that initial getting to it, getting started. Like, even like you just said, you'll record, you'll, you'll get, you'll dread getting up to record or, you know, going to record. And then after you do it, it's like, okay, that rewarding feeling. I'm glad I did it. Mm -hmm. But it's just that starting that starting point. I know. And how do we how do we get out of that? I wish I had an answer. <laughs> I wish I had an answer. I, I do. Like, and- we love what we do. We enjoy what we do. But it's just like and it's also really intimidating to put yourself out there. I feel like and I know I don't know about you, but for me, I know sometimes I'm just like I'm done talking for today. Like I don't yeah. have anything more to say. I'm drained. I don't like I don't feel up to conversing yeah no same and I mean it's helpful when I'm doing it with a guest because it Mm -hmm. it helps drive the conversation but then like those times when we were just talking about like sometimes something happens your guest can't make it or whatever the case is schedules don't align and then you have to record by yourself I dread those moments because Mm -hmm. I'm like oh my gosh like what am I gonna say am I gonna get on here for five minutes or am I going to say enough that it's 30 minutes? Granted, a five-minute podcast is not bad, 10-minute, whatever. A short mm-hmm. one is really not bad, but it's like I want to make sure that I'm giving my audience all that I can give and say something valuable. How do I do that by myself? Like, How do I even stay motivated when I have to do a show by myself? Yeah, I feel that too. And I went into this podcast knowing that it was a solo podcast. And I'm mm. not even going to lie. My first few episodes, even though I had content written out, a 30 minute episode might have taken me three hours to record because it's hard to continue a conversation mm. by yourself. You know what I mean? Like it is. You, I can say something and then like, OK, how, now how do I change the subject to something else? Because it's not like someone's having a conversation with me and they're leading it in another direction. It's literally just mm-hmm. me. And it's almost it almost feels silly sometimes. But like, I know that there are certain things that I've talked about that I've had people to say, like, I'm relating so much to this right now or like, thank you for speaking on that. And I feel like that's also what motivates me, too, is knowing that, you know, there's one or two people out there that one, look forward to the days my episode drops and two, are learning something from me or relating to something that I said, because I feel like that's my whole purpose. Yeah. And I know that that's yours, too. I know you feel that. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, I 100 percent agree. Like I ended up doing the episode before this was solo, Mm -hmm. but I was so motivated because I had just came from that conference that I was just talking about. And it was um, invest. It's called Invest Fest here in Atlanta. And it was just the, the entire weekend was just motivational from the speakers to the vendors and just connecting and networking with other people. So I was, you know, enticed to get on there and just remind other women like you know don't give up on yourself like you are literally everything that you need to be successful like and it wasn't long it was like 12 minutes maybe Mm -hmm. 10 to 12 minutes and just believe in yourself like you are literally like your biggest 
competition, you are, you would be the reason that you fail. Like even yeah. when it comes to the, this topic of staying consistent, like you would be the reason why you don't. Like you have everything in you to remain consistent, find out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Like you're your biggest competition. You are the one that will stop you from anything. It's not the other people. Mm -hmm. It's not the outside world. It's literally you. You're either going to do it or you're not. Mm -hmm. And you also really... Yeah, I, I feel I agree with that. I really do. Like, you're either going to do it or not. And you really have to hold yourself accountable. Like, I know for me, girl, uh, I have to tell myself, like, hey, you just sat here and scrolled on TikTok for an hour when you could have been, you know, writing some content or thinking about the next week's episode. Like, you have to hold yourself accountable. Like, hey, you're not making this your priority right now. And even that is hard sometimes. Yeah, but. That. I have to remind myself because I, I feel like there's so many times that I'll think about things that I'm doing and I'm like, well, that thing that I was doing or that I, that thing that I wasted a half an hour on or an hour on, is that going to be relevant to my future in five years? Is that going to be helping my future in five years? It's just also, almost like tunnel vision. Like you got to just not exactly. do anything unless it's on your path of where you plan on going. Just buckling yep. down and focusing. Absolutely. Tunnel vision and just being focused. Like it's so easy to get unfocused and just be like, hmm, whatever with anything. Yeah. But like you said, having that constant reminder, like, is this going to if I know I have a goal to to be somewhere in life in whatever X amount of years or X amount of months, like just reminding yourself, like, is this going to get me to where I'm going to be? Is missing a week of recording going to help me remain consistent in making sure mm -hmm. I record? Because one week can turn into two weeks. It almost did for me. Yeah, <laughs> I, was I, was just gonna, like, I was just going to no say content. that if I gave myself a break for a week, it would probably turn into two and then probably <laughs> turn into three. And before mm -hmm. you know it, it's six months and then no podcast. And then what? You know, yeah. then I start over mm -hmm. from zero. Back at square one. And I don't want to. Who what wants I to do that? Because I don't. <laughs> In anything. Like, literally, I, I'm sitting here preparing for next year's summit for the boss mom. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get this down. Like I was literally dragging my feet. Like, okay, I got next month mm -hmm. to start. Okay. It's August. Like we're literally six months away from the end of the year. Like, yeah. Normally come people. Up right. And yeah. I and I'm trying to put myself in that mentality of entrepreneur, business owner, and you know, just success. They don't drag their feet. No. Not at all. They're, and they they don't procrastinate either. Oh, I can do this tomorrow. Yeah. No, let's do this now. Right. Let's get it done now. And if you can't do it, find somebody else that can to help you. Mm-hmm. Like being a mom that is doing a bunch of other things, like that's not. And, and being a stay-at-home mom is not an easy task either. But being a mom that's, I consider myself stay-at-home because I don't leave the house. I work from home. So I'm literally doing work and at-home stuff. But I'm work from home, stay-at-home mom. <laughs> but it's just yeah. like, I got to delegate things somewhere somehow. Because everything is not going to get done by me. It just can't. Mm -hmm. You know, as bad as I may want to be controlling and, and do everything, <clears throat> excuse me, just knowing that I can't and just figuring out a way to delegate something if I can, even though sometimes delegation costs, but you got to figure out like what's worth it. Is it worth it? Yeah. At the end of the day, you're paying a price for peace, right? Right. That if, if you look at it that way, I mean, yeah, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. We Millennials, especially, we work smarter, not harder. So if you need to pay someone yeah. to take some stress off your back, that's you got to That's just what you got to do. Right. Just budget it, you know, like even if it's coming and I'm going to I'm going to make sure I take away the things that I can't do that I'm not like good at and things I don't want to do, like mm -hmm. cleaning the house. I hate doing it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm a woman. Yeah, I'm supposed to cook clean. But like, no, <laughs> I need a house cleaner. I don't have one yet, but that's definitely on the to do. List oh, I would take one in a things. second. <laughs> yeah, I would take a cleaner in a second. That's like one of the things I like, dread. 
It is. So it's just like, okay, if that's one thing that I can get off my plate so that I can be consistent in other areas that I know I am going to do or I can do, like, bye. Facts. <laughs> how do you how do you manage when do you do your content when you're home working? Do you do both at the same time or do you have a specific day for content? No, I don't, but I want to. It used to, well, I'm not gonna say I don't, because it used to be Sundays. Okay. But and I'm well, I can't even say that. Sundays used to just be my day to like get things in line to like make sure everything is ready to be posted and and stuff like that not necessarily content writing for new ideas Mm -hmm. but I am looking to add something on my calendar as like a content day because I see all these um content creation content creator people not even necessarily moms but just content creators on Instagram and TikTok like saying okay just pick one day and do your content have like five different outfits if you're recording something um you know visually but it's just hard and that's another thing for me like getting started with that because I struggle not only finding things to post because I'm the one that's like I don't even know what to say but then also (laughs) getting motivated to like sit there and do it yeah yeah I definitely can feel that I I just got over the 10K mark on TikTok. So I was able to like apply for the creator fund there. But it's such a pain in the butt. And everything that I read says like, oh, you should make at least five videos a day. And I'm like, well, what am I going to say for five videos? Hold on, post, like make five videos to to post on one day or just make five, five videos? Like post five videos daily on TikTok. And like, I was even talking to my mom, like, what do I post five times? Like, what do I talk about five times a day? She's like, don't think about it too much. Just be the content. Like, you know, say something while you're cooking your kids breakfast in the morning. Like people like that relatable aspect to people. You know what I mean? But I I haven't gotten there. I, I really am trying, but I just, I don't have five videos worth of things to say every day. (laughs) Yeah, that's, I'm not going to say that's crazy, but it's a lot. I can see it is a lot. I can see how it could work, but I'm also that person that forgets to catch a moment. Yeah, same. To even create the content because like like your mom said, like it literally can be your everyday life. Like you getting the kids ready, stuff you do. You're not going out of the way to do something extra. It's something that you do on a daily. Mm-hmm. Like I was thinking about that this morning, actually, when I was, had the, I had the baby in one arm. I'm making coffee. Literally, I was like, I guess that could have been content. But like, totally I wasn't been. thinking about getting my phone. <laughs> yeah. I'm just doing yeah. it. <laughs> and that's the problem. You have to like be recording all the time. You have to be recording all the time. And how do you do that? I was going to do the same thing. I took a mental health day. I got my nails done today. I was off work. Like I had, I had a good day mm-hmm. today and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to make a TikTok. I'm going to make a TikTok of dropping the kids off, like a whole thing, like a mini vlog almost. I was like halfway to get the place to get my nails done and I hadn't recorded anything. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot. Right. I just, and now it's like, if I start, would that. it make sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, what do you do then? Exactly. And that's and then I I sometimes think I'm like, man, is this for me? Because I don't know. Like, I love doing the show. I love getting on here, talking, meeting other moms and just learning more about other things that, you know, I don't know about, Mm -hmm. which is cool because, you know, initially I was only doing audio. Now I'm doing audio and visuals, Mm -hmm. um, which I love doing it. You know, I love having something to, to put on YouTube. But then I'm like, okay, even making my clips to promote the show, I struggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so something consuming. I struggle with too. Yeah. And I feel like an old lady operating TikTok. <laughs> that's how I felt too. <laughs> I-, I kid you not. Let me tell you a funny story. My very first Not very first. One of the first TikToks that I posted, I was doing something different. I was putting like a bunch of pictures together, almost like a slideshow type thing. When I Mm -hmm. tell you that this TikTok took me like 12 hours, not even kidding, like using it and then putting my phone down because like my eyes are starting to bug out. I could not figure out how to do certain things at first. And now it's easy. Like you just learn it after a while. But yeah, that that first TikTok that I was trying to make. Yeah, it took me a while. 
I did not know what I was doing. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, why don't I know how to work this? And we're the generate. We're literally the generation of social media. Yeah, and, and I feel TikTok, like TikTok, <laughs> everything. I, that's how I felt too. But TikTok is so good for promotion of anything. Yeah. Like, I know, I know podcasts that I've seen just from TikTok that I've never heard of before because I see like the little clips and stuff. It's definitely a big promotional yeah. tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely about to wipe Instagram out. I feel like that's why Instagram is like now you can't post any video but a reel. And it's just like, OK, you can't. This is. Yeah. They wow. Took it away. Like I you can't just post a regular that. video to your to your feed. I, you can still do videos on your story. But if you want to post a video on your feed, oh, it to has to be feed. a reel. Wow, you're right. Because last time I went to go post one, it wouldn't let me be like post it as a post. It was only a reel. And I was wondering what happened. Wow, I didn't realize they took that away. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, we don't need the same freaking app. I mean, no, luckily they still let you post pictures, but <laughs> yeah. And I I don't know about you, but when Instagram first came out, I was like, this is stupid. I'll just use Facebook. And now Instagram is like was the big thing for a while. I don't I don't know what I thought, honestly, when Instagram first came mm-hmm. out. I feel like everything just merged together. And now I'm like, what's Facebook? I don't know how to work Facebook anymore because I don't do I don't use it. I literally only have Facebook to keep up with family. Yeah, I like will reshare stuff on Facebook sometimes. But other than that, that's it. Yeah. I don't like and I, statuses or anything at all. And or if I do, it's like about the podcast or Mostly about the podcast, honestly. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say or, <laughs> but uh, or a magazine. Like if I get, like I did the uh, Atlanta Voyage and stuff. But I don't know what to do with it. Like everybody's like, oh, you know, you should use it for your business. And I'm just like, I can't mentally handle posting on all these things. Like if it Mm-mm. was like the podcast, like where you could just upload to one thing and it goes out to everything, even though I know you can connect the Facebook to to your uh, business page on Instagram, but I've had issues with it to where it's like, if things become too difficult, I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. I had mine set up like that. My Instagram and my Facebook. So anything that I posted on Instagram would go to like my business Facebook page, but then it got disconnected and I was just over it. Like, uh, yeah, whatever (laughs) the connection. And then I'm like, my, my business Facebook probably has no one following it. So it was just like stressful. Yeah. Again, if I'm too stressed, I, I can't be consistent. Yeah. No, same, same. You can't, you have to, you have to just put the, what is important, make a list, start from the top, whatever's the most important, do it first, whatever can wait, do it last. You have to be able to delegate. There's, there's just so many things. There's so many things. It is, but I'm glad you just, I was going to say if there were any last words that you would even give to a mom that is having difficulty being consistent in whatever she's doing, what would you say? I feel like you just wrapped it up, but if you have anything additional to add, yeah, no, I mean, that's really it. I just feel like, you you know, do that for yourself and don't put yourself on the back burner. Do it. Whether Make it work. Figure out a list, like right. I said, or figure out a day, like you said, make a certain day about your content or about whatever it is for you. Make that time for yourself because exactly. a happy mama is happy kids. That part. And happy <laughs> man, if you got one at home, all of that. Yeah, there, there you go, <laughs> period. If you're happy, everybody's happy. Exactly. And if I'm not, they'll know it and they won't be happy (laughs) either. So, (laughs) but I appreciate you coming on and talking. Alyssa is so down to earth and so real. So I appreciate her for being on. And if you are not listening to her podcast, you definitely should. And you should see it in her. Well, everybody is not watching us. So I'll let you go (laughs) ahead and say your handles and how people can find you. Uh, yeah, so you can find me on Instagram. My podcast Instagram is at that's what mom said pod. I am that's what mom said on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that you get podcasts and check me out. Yes. And as you all can see, we are not 100% in our consistency routine. So 
you know, don't take this as we are preaching to you, but more so wanting to learn and grow with you all because we're struggling too in some areas and we're going to get it together. And so are you. So I appreciate you ladies for tuning in for episode six, season five. What is consistency as a working mom? We talked about it tonight and now I am challenging you all to execute on anything that you're struggling with when it comes to consistency. So thanks again. This is the Boss Mom Movement and we are signing out until next time, ladies. Hey ladies, if you enjoyed today's episode, do me a favor and leave a five-star rating and review. You can find the Boss Mom Movement streaming on Apple and Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and YouTube. Want to keep up with the movement? Visit my website at thebossmommovement.com and subscribe. Thanks for the support and I'll see you next time.